Yeah, hi. Um, my name is Carl Lambert. Uh, I'm here from a project called uh, Universal Market Access, or UMA. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm quite pleased to present to you guys this research paper we just put out. Um, it's fresh, it's a draft. Uh, we're calling it Bitdex, and this is our design for a decentralized BitMEX uh, using what we're calling priceless financial contracts. So, um, goals of this talk, just to give you an overview. I want to explain to you guys how Bitdex works. I want to explain this concept of priceless financial contracts, and then go into some details of what we think that can enable. So, um, as a starting point, let's just talk about what BitMEX is. And I'm not really picking on BitMEX here, I'm talking about any uh, centralized futures exchange, anything that has levered transactions. Um, and so BitMEX, like uh, the CME trading futures or, or any CFD provider, um, is a levered derivative trading platform. It's a futures exchange. And the exchange itself provides a bunch of functions that make it usable to the people that trade on it. Um, those functions are, are require a trusted third-party operator. And so those are things like custodying margin for all the positions, um, moving uh, margin back and forth clearing, um, and ensuring the solvency of, the, of, of all the positions in the exchange. Um, what's really important to note, just to remind everybody of, is that when like Bob and Alice trade on BitMEX, um, Bob and Alice might actually end up having offsetting positions, but they don't face each other. Everyone faces the exchange. The exchange functions as what's called like a central clearing counterparty, and they're the ones that ensure the solvency of all the positions. So, um, BitMEX does some good things, all these exchanges. Fast, high performance trading, we like that, with high leverage. This is things that people want. BitMEX is growing a big business, CME, futures exchanges, big businesses, these are services people want. But they are completely custodial, and uh, the exchange sets the rules of the game. So the exchange decides what leverage you get, how to trade, da da da, but importantly, they also decide uh, when positions get liquidated. Uh, you don't actually have that power. And so this is like really centralized. It's not just like a centralized Coinbase or whatever, um, where that's just custodial. There's also this whole aspect of uh, centralization around uh, trusting BitMEX or whatever exchange to monitor um, your position solvency correctly and to not liquidate you at the wrong time. So this is bad. This is not what we want. So the question is, to start with, why is decentralizing BitMEX so hard? What makes this so difficult? Why can't we just like run this on the blockchain? And the fact is that there's just so many damn transactions we have to check. So the idea is that BitMEX functions as this uh, somewhat of a black box that has all the position and margin data for everybody, all the trades in the system. And they go through and they check the solvency of all trades with each price tick. So every price update, they're checking the, the solvency of every position in the system. And that's just a lot of transactions. You can't run that on the chain. Um, and the data isn't even available to do so if you did have it. So what are we going to do? So we're going to try to solve this with blockchains, um, but more importantly with some layer two thinking, some layer two concepts that we're going to put into uh, financial contract design. So, okay. Core idea here, our observation, um, on a futures exchange like BitMEX, position data does not change that often. The data can actually, it it's changes uh, infrequently enough that it can be recorded on chain, allowing anyone to monitor positions to verify their solvency. And so this is pretty interesting, right? If we can actually put the position data on chain, we can design a system where anyone can monitor the solvency of that data off-chain, allowing us to have a design with no centralized price feed and no centralized arbiter of proper collateralization. So BitDEX does this by allowing any counterparty to dispute any opposite position. So any long can dispute any short, any short can dispute any long, and an oracle is only used to resolve these disputes when they happen. So this is very much like an oracle minimized design. We only use an oracle when a dispute happens. And I'll go into more detail on that like, in a second. Um, penalties are then paid to the disputer by the disputed position 
if the dispute is deemed valid by the Oracle. So there's economic incentives here to correctly dispute or enforce uh, uh, the way the position trades. Okay, so core idea here, we're gonna ask people off-chain to monitor the exchange to see if it's properly collateralized. That's like the big idea. And there is no on-chain price feed. Important point. All right, so let's just talk about what's happening on-chain and off-chain, kind of go through some details here, and why this can be fast. So, um, BitDEX only puts uh, data on-chain that needs to be on-chain. Let's, let's break down the kind of core exchange functions. So, margin deposits and withdrawals. Those happen very rarely. People contributing new margin or withdrawing margin from their account, like on BitMEX, that happens very frequently. That can easily be supported with on-chain transactions. Recording new trades. How many new trades actually happen in a second? It's hard to deduce exactly what happens on BitMEX here, but it's like low single digits. Arguably, that'd be tough to support on Ethereum right now, but you could get pretty close. So we can also record that data on-chain. The interesting part and where this scales is all the measuring trade solvency. So checking all the positions. BitMEX has like ten, tens of thousands of transactions per second to check um, all the positions in their system with every price tick. But we are pushing that off-chain because now we've recorded that trade and position data off-chain. So anyone off-chain can check the solvency of the position. That's where our scalability comes from. The one point I want to make clear is that um, BitDEX does not solve like a decentralized order book problem. That's not what we're starting out to solve. Um, longs and shorts in this trading system still need a mechanism to find each other. Um, that would be an order book. We aren't building that. Um, there's great um, semi-trusted designs or peer-to-peer -peer order book designs like Zero-X Mesh that are pretty interesting approaches to solving that problem. Okay, so let's, let's go into an example just to try to illustrate what's happening with this, this design. So remember, um, the trade, the deposit, uh, the trade and position data is recorded on chain, and anyone can check the positions. So what starts here? We're going to name all of our longs uh, L1 through LN over here, and our shorts S1 through SN. Important point: L1 does not face S1, and S2 does not face L2. Um, they all face the, the contract of the exchange, so they're not directly offsetting. Um, but we're going to record, we're going to also define a market here where we're going to trade the price of Bitcoin. And let's just say there's a starting price of Bitcoin at $10,000 uh, per coin. And so our NPV function for what longs and shorts get paid out is going to be the current price minus $10,000. So at our initial price of $10,000, longs and shorts both make $0, we're all flat. And we have a margin requirement here of 10% of the current price, which means we can have 10x leverage. For $1,000, you can get $10,000 of exposure. Jumping through some details. Okay. So we go and we record this data on chain. Everybody agrees that the price of Bitcoin is $10,000. They check the NPV and margin, and everybody looks good. They all check out. Everybody thinks everyone is correctly margined, and the system is solvent. So let's now say that L2 thinks the price of Bitcoin might drop to 9,500. And if that were to happen, L2 knows that they will be under collateralized. They'll lose $500 because they're long. Um, they'll lose $500 and they'll no longer meet their margin requirement of 10% of the price. So what L2 does is deposit additional margin. Um, they're doing this to make sure they don't get disputed and liquidated in their position. Cool, easy. This is exactly how it would work on BitMEX 2, where if you didn't, if you're right against your margin requirement and you don't deposit more margin, you'll get liquidated. Um, let's go through another example where L2 does not deposit additional margin. But um, S1 does indeed think the price price of Bitcoin has dropped to 9500 Note that I said it's, this is S1's opinion. There is no on-chain price feed for them to point to. They, they basically, it's like a bring your own price feed concept. S1 is looking at the world and says, hey, I think the price of Bitcoin is 9,500. 
They're then going onto our on-chain data and they see that at a price of 9,500, L2 would actually be under collateralized according to our NPV and margin functions. And so what S1 does is they go ahead and dispute L2. They say, hey, I think you're under collateralized, you're in default. And at that point, that dispute goes to an oracle that's going to um, resolve this, this disagreement or this, this issue. Um, and if S1 is right, L2 will pay a penalty to S1, this default penalty. Um, if S1 was wrong, according to the oracle, the penalty will go the other way to compensate L2 for being unfairly disputed. Okay, core design, core idea. Um, so these are the core function signatures in our just initial simple design. Um, I'll actually just jump ahead to the slide and go back in a second. Um, that green is pretty bright, so you can't read that, but it basically says we've got a happy path situation. So um, imagine you're now a position in this BitDeck system. At any given time, you can do one of uh, four things. You can do nothing, because you think you're correctly, correctly collateralized and you want to just sit there and you're happy. You can deposit additional margin in your position, which you would do if you think the trade is going to move against you and you're, you might get uh, liquidated. Or you can, with, you can withdraw, request a withdrawal of margin, so if a trade has moved a lot in your favor and you're up a lot of money, you can make a request to withdraw that money. Note that you cannot immediately withdraw the money because we need to um, have a, a, a time lock to allow other participants to verify that that request is valid, that you're not trying to take out too much money out of your position. Or you can dispute uh, somebody else's position and say they're under collateralized. So the core argument here is that in the optimistic path, in the happy path, you're just depositing or withdrawing margin and making sure your position stays perfectly collateralized. There is no need for an oracle, an oracle price, while you're staying in that happy path. The only time we need an oracle or an oracle price is when there's a dispute, when somebody says, hey, this position is under collateralized. So just to go back to that last slide for a second, um, these are like the core, core functions of this simplistic design. Deposits happen any time. Withdrawals can happen any time. Again, time locked by this delay, this liveness requirement. Um, and once that passes, then anybody can withdraw that, or then the, the withdrawal request goes through. Uh, disputes. Remember, any long can dispute any short, and vice versa. What's interesting about this is that because we have many watchers of the system, we've got many longs and many shorts, and they're all watching each other, we can actually have a pretty short liveness requirement. Our time lock on disputes can be pretty short because we can be pretty confident that somebody's going to be there to watch the system. Um, the last two things here are really about entering and exiting trades in the position. So we have a simple design where anytime you want to enter a new position, you can create a pair. So any long and short, find each other, say, hey, we want to do a trade at this price, they negotiate that off-chain and then they come to the system and they're like, hey, here's our new pair of longs and shorts. Um, we want to enter the, the system. Um, the BitDex contract just has to check that that new pair of longs and shorts is correctly margined. And we can do that with a clever trick. This is a little bit of an implementation detail, but we do it with a clever trick of having that new pair point to an existing long and short position that it is equally collateralized to, or more collateralized than. This is detailed in the white paper. Um, but really, it's a shortcut for us to have an instant entry through the system. And then we have a simple uh, mechanism where you can instantaneously exit a uh, trade from the position and withdraw your margin. Um, if you're along, you do that by buying an offsetting short position. And then you're immediately able to withdraw the combined long and short deposits. So. Those are detailed in a bit more detail in the white paper. Just a quick overview. So again, back to the slide. This kind of looks like layer two. Um, and that's the idea. This is meant to be a bit of a, like a layer two for financial contract design, where we are assuming that things stay in the happy path, and we are only using our oracle 
when there is an unhappy dispute, when sort of something goes wrong. Um, so we're calling this priceless financial contract design. Um, and the core idea here is that if everyone behaves as they're supposed to, if everyone uh, doesn't default and adds margin appropriately, then we don't actually need an on-chain price, hence priceless. Um, this is the happy path. We stay in the happy path, we need no prices on-chain. Um, other core kind of concepts of this, uh, this, this framework that we're proposing is that when someone behaves badly, it needs to be observable off-chain. Um, we need rewards to correctly reward participants for disputing bad behavior. Um, and if that dispute is proven valid, we need the bad behavior to be punished, to be penalized. Um, and we only need on-chain prices to resolve disputes, which means that the Oracle functions as a sort of dispute resolution mechanism, which should be relatively infrequently used. So these ideas, the sort of priceless financial contract design, this is something new that we're going to write more about. We would really love feedback on this idea, but again, it's all about how we can minimize Oracle usage to allow us to do higher leverage, higher speed uh, things with DeFi and with financial contracts. So, going a touch deeper on what this means for Oracle design itself. So, writing contracts pricelessly, I'm, I'm repeating the point from the last slide, Writing contracts pricelessly means oracles become dispute resolution mechanisms that only need to be used when counterparties fail to agree. That we think is kind of interesting and kind of novel. Um, and the example here is to point to like the fiat world where me and would enter into a legal contract. Financial contracts, a lot of them are like legal contracts. We could enter into a legal contract and we do that privately with no intention of litigating that contract. We only litigate it if something goes wrong, if we fail to maintain the, the terms of trade. The same concept is being applied here, where we're saying, hey, let's enter into a financial contract that we both know the terms, and we're going to do um, what we've got to do, um, but we're only going to dispute, we're only going to use an oracle if something goes wrong. Um, framing oracles as, dis as dispute resolution mechanisms arguably opens up the design space for decentralized oracles, since we can do things a little bit differently. We no longer need like an on-chain price feed that's constantly pushing a, a, a lagged or real-time price to the chain. We can instead let oracles be relatively slow and expensive and potentially like far more decentralized uh, because they should be relatively rarely used. Again, like using the court analogy, you don't go to court for every contract you write. You only go to court when there's a major dispute. Um, and it also lets our oracles be asynchronous. We don't need the dispute resolution process to be happening at the same time as the rest of the contract system. So Uma has built a design for this type of oracle that we call our data verification mechanism um, that actually puts economic guarantees around corruptibility. Um, that design, we've got a white paper, and it's actually been built. Uh, it's on testnet. Uh, it's well suited to support this type of priceless financial contract. So just to wrap up really quickly, um, we introduced this idea of Bit BitDEX, which is decentralizing BitMEX, something that has uh, like been really, really hard to do in DeFi. And we did this using this concept of priceless financial contracts where we are pushing all of the work off-chain, so we are getting greater scalability by having positions, their solvency being monitored off-chain and enforced via disputes. We're doing this without an on-chain price feed. People bring your own price feed off-chain. Um, and we're minimizing Oracle usage, so we're reframing the use of an Oracle as purely a dispute resolution function. This lets us build what we're calling like fast D5 products, like BitDEX, an exchange with leverage. It also lets us build synthetic tokens. We're, we're big on synthetic tokens. You guys can go to our website and read all about that. Um, but we can do this with lower collateral requirements because we can be much more efficient with our margin usage 
by not having a lag to price speed or, or any kind of delay. Um, and we can build all kinds of swaps options also to other financial contracts. And this is the sort of stuff that, frankly, we love talking to all of you about, um, what you want to build, um, and how we can go about building it. Okay. So, wrapping up, um, we've got a lot of research out there that we would love feedback on. This big text paper we just published last week, um, it's, it's a research paper and it's a draft. Um, we would love feedback on this design. Um, we also have our design for our Oracle, our dispute resolution style Oracle, um, that we published uh, a, a couple months ago um, that we would love feedback on. Um, and there's five of us here at DevCon. Uh, please join our developer Slack, links in our GitHub, links to where you can find various things and come find us. Thanks very much.